Happy Friday, guys. I hope you guys are having a fabulous day. Please forgive my appearance. A little rough, been running around, been up since 3.30 a.m., been running around. Uh, had a Zoom interview with a broker, uh, brokerage company today, and then ran across town with my sister-in-law to look at a couple properties. And, um, and then we went um, Christmas shopping a bit and stopped by my brother's house. And while I was there, I told my brother, I'm like, hey, do you realize that today, December 17th, it was the very day that uh, we entered into this great nation, America, the land of the free. So um, I've been pondering that when I had um, a quiet moment, just... Um, after I got back home from all my running around, um, I was thinking like, wow, 40 years ago today, I remember it as it was yesterday. Um, I remember us taking off from the refugee camps in the Philippine islands. We were in different refugee camps, first in Thailand, Thailand, Cambodia, uh, we lived in a couple of different ref refugee camps, if not three. Um, site 2 was one of them, Chunburi, and the, the first one where the Khmer Rouge and the Vietnamese, the Viet Cong were bombing each other and um, uh, my mother had to move us, take us away from there because it was dangerous. Um, a bomb like dropped right in front of our little hut and I was screaming my head off hanging on to my little brother so Pat hiding underneath um, a bamboo bed just screaming and just trembling um, I thought we were gonna die you know when a bomb a grenade goes off near you it's pretty scary so um, mom moved us away and you know we were running for our lives in that first refugee camps along the Cambodian and Thailand border um, mind you, we had already ran four years of our lives throughout Cambodia, uh, just fleeing um, death from being captured by the Khmer Rouge and being executed um, as they had captured my father and um, he perished during the killing fields in Cambodia. But um, so we ended up in about three different refugee camps in the uh, Thailand um, border there, uh, probably from 1978, 1979 until 1981. And then we hopped over to um, the Filipino, a Philippine island, another refugee camp. We went there very long, maybe a couple days. Um, and then we were boarded on this huge massive airplane um and i was nine years old and it was middle december we bought this huge i guess boeing what's it called boeing 57 i'm not sure what it's called those huge giant gigantic airplane so we um got on the airplane i remember how broken hearted i was i knew that we were going to a far 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 away land like another planet away from my birthland Cambodia and away from my missing mother or missing mom so my heart along with all the other Cambodian refugees in that huge plane were broken we were hopeless we were destitute we were beyond grieving like when you hurt so deeply and you don't even cry because you've already cried enough and I just remembered I can't even describe the feelings, the emotions, and I think about it. I don't want to feel it. I don't want to feel it. Anyways, um, so we flew from the Philippines and flew straight to Alaska in the middle of December. So we all had to exit Alaska, uh, in Alaska, because they had to refuel. When we stepped off the airplane in Alaska for the first time, I was beyond freezing to death and I saw breath coming out of my mouth and I remember just 
everything inside me, you know, like my snot and everything was frozen. Sorry, it, can, it sounds kind of gross, but I was just like so cold. I was under 50 pounds, just skin and bone and um, rattling. And um, I thought to myself, you know, when we stepped out of the airplane, freezing to death and I saw snow for the first time, um, I was like, oh my goodness, did they bring us here to die? That's what I thought, at, you know, at nine years old. It reminded me of the children of Israel when, you know, they were brought out of Egypt and out of captivity um, into um, going to the promised land. And through the wilderness, you know, they were questioning if Moses and God had brought them out there to die in the wilderness. Well, that's what I thought, too. I was like, oh, my goodness, did they bring us here to finish us off to die in this freezing icy cold weather uh, that i've never seen before and obviously our tropical frame it, it was not made for that so it was traumatizing to say the least thank god they didn't leave us in alaska we were just there to refuel and rest it for a while um and then they flew us to california uh it was cold there too and then they flew us to our final destination where they booked us as uh, refugees December 17th, 1981. It was in, uh, I think it's called Schroeder, Houston, Texas. It was like a very poor, poor, poor part of Houston, like the ghetto. Like you could, you see pimp and prostitutes, drug dealers, you know, walking the street and like right outside your windows. Um, it was so bad that um, shortly after we got there, um, one of the... Um, African-American um, uh, people that live in that area came into our little Cambodian ref refugee community and broke into a house and tried to rape a Cambodian teenager. And of course, um, the Cambodian man in that house shot him. I don't know where he got the gun from, but it was traumatizing to me because here I am thinking, we just fled the killing fields where there's a lot of blood, a lot of killing and slaughter for years to come to this land, America, to run from all of that. And here I'm seeing, you know, blood all over on this concrete from that man being shot to death for trying to rape a young Cambodian teenage girl. So I'm thinking to myself, Oh my gosh, this place is not safe either. You know, at age nine, I'm like, where, where is there a safe place? So anyways, um, we spent the first year there um, sharing different homes with many different refugee families. Very poor, dirt poor. My um, grandfather, step-grandfather um, that we came here with, um, and myself, my brother, and I think my uh, Aunt Becky, she's three years older than me, we would like walk across town throughout the whole area because we didn't have cars. We didn't even have money to buy a car. We had nothing. We had nothing, zero, nothing. Um, we had lice. <laughs> anyway, it's not funny, but it's true. But um, so we walked and we went through all the dumpsters, the trash can, uh, looking for anything that we could salvage so that you know um, like aluminum cans you can you can um, gather save them and then recycle them so that's what we did um, I found my favorite dress in a dumpster it ha it was a white chiffon dress so pretty to me it was beautiful to me it had a few little holes in it so I took it home and my grandmother patched it up it was so pretty. It was so pretty that my brother wore it too. <laughs> he was the only boy out of three girls. So we we had a lot of fun with him. He wore my uh, little high heel wedge shoes and that chiffon dress that we got from the dumpster. And we I have pictures of it. I don't know where it is now. But um, we traumatized him quite a bit. And, he, you know, he didn't know any better. He was like seven. Anyways. So, uh, <laughs> But that was my beginning. Um, and then, you know, God's hands had always been upon me. And I remember flying in the airplane overseas, you know, coming into America. 
I remember looking down from the airplane and seeing bright lights everywhere because it was Christmas time and America celebrate Christmas with lights. And so from the airplane, I was looking down, everything was bright and beautiful and glorious. You know, so coming from where we came from, which is pure hell on earth, literally running, you know, for four and a half, five years, six years of our lives, Cambodia four years and then a couple of years throughout the different refugee camps. There was pure hell on earth to come to this land where there was uh, bright lights everywhere and people were kind to us. They gave us clothing. They gave us some money. They loved on us. These were churches like the Baptist church. Um, I think my family was sponsored by a Catholic church. Um, you know, and so everybody came together, the body of Christ. Um, I'm not saying that, uh, this is not the video for it. I am not saying that all denominations, Catholic churches are the body of Christ. No, 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 no. That's not what I'm saying. Don't hear what I'm not saying. But God uses all things for our good and for his purpose, honor, and glory. Okay? So we're not going to get into that in this video. I just want to share the goodness of God, the faithfulness of God upon my life, and that Today, 40 years ago, I came into this wonderful, great America. Makes me want to cry because the America that I knew back then is not the America that I know now. It's so, so different. It breaks my heart. It's so different. So different, guys. People were seemingly kinder and there was less evil. I'm just going to say it. less evil, less lawlessness, but um, our nation has turned drastically, drastically. I don't even recognize it anymore, but um, I just wanted to get on here and just give God praise for his goodness and faithfulness, you know, because Christmas, the reason why Christ came as a baby so that he could save people like me people like me who didn't have anything had no hope people like me who were who was poor who was sick in the heart broken shattered my soul was beyond shattered i was beyond traumatized mind emotions thank goodness i didn't have anything broken physically i was scrawny um, and I had lice, you know, I had a big belly, probably worms or something, but, um, most children, you know, from third world nations, they have all of that just because we didn't have anything clean and good to eat. So anyways, um, but Christmas, Christ came to undo the works of the devil. It was sin that brought in all the wickedness the evil of the genocide it was sin it was evil and it was through sin that brought in war pestilent diseases destruction holocaust genocide brokenness separation from family greed you know Jesus came to undo all of that and to give the poor, the broken, the fatherless, the motherless, the penniless, um, hope, a new life. And those who would believe in him, those who would receive him as Lord and Savior, they would be called children of God. Hallelujah. That is the true meaning of Christmas because Christ came to die. He came to live, to die, and he rose again, giving us the gift of salvation, the gift, the forgiveness of sins. All who repent and believe in him, he gives us his Holy Spirit, his holy inheritance, his abundant life here now on earth and even in heaven where we will dwell with our God. 
and with all who believe, the saints, the angels, all who believe and obey his gospel, those who put their hope and trust in him, those who turn from falsehood and idols and evil and sin and turn to him, Jesus Christ, and receive his Holy Spirit. Christ came to give us the abundant and eternal life. Amen. So although I still have no parents, and thank God I have my brother and his family, his beautiful wife and two children here. I have my cousins, aunties, uncles, they're, you know, spread out. Um, but God has been our father. He's been our provider, protector. There isn't anything that my brother and I lack as far anything, really. He's so good to us. He is so, so good to us. That's the abundant life. And we have eternal life in him through Jesus Christ. You know, one of my most favorite scriptures, I have so many favorites, but this is one of them right here. It's uh, 1 John 3, verse 1. It's 1 through 10, but I'm going to read verse 1. See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God. And so we are. Hallelujah. Even an orphan, amen, like myself. I am a daughter of the Most High God. Even if you have parents or an orphan like me, you have a father. And our father is the king of kings and lord of lords, the maker of heaven and earth, the creator of your being. Amen. Hallelujah. He's our protector. He is our creator. He is the lover of our heart and soul. And he will provide and take care of us. So he's been taking care of me. He showed me that he was there before I came out of my mother's womb. Yes, he took me back all the way back there and showed me in vivid dreams that God was right there. He was watching me and I was watching uh, me in my mother's womb coming out and God was right there. He was showing me that I was there before you came out. I was there when you made your first baby coo. So that's how faithful he is. So he's kept me, you know, through all the killing fields in Cambodia, through all the the devastation, uh, destruction, um, through all the different nations that he's brought me through, the refugee camps, you know, Thailand, Philippines, you know, Alaska. Oh my gosh, I do not want to ever, ever be anywhere where there's snow um, any time of the year. I don't mind it, like a week, you know, for Christmas, for, I don't know, just to play for a few days. And then run right back inside and chill in front of the fireplace. But man, to live in that horrendous weather, I cannot even fathom. I can, but I never ever want to go back there ever, ever again. Goodness, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, thank you, thank you for placing me right here in Florida, right by the beach, right, uh, right by the ocean. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You know exactly what I need. Thank you, God. Uh, I'm just being silly. I'm so happy, guys. I'm so thankful, so ecstatic. So we are sons and daughters of the Most High God. Beloved, we are God's children now. It does not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when He appears, we shall be like Him, for we shall see Him as He is, and everyone who thus hopes in Him purifies Himself as He is pure. Amen. God has shown me in many dreams. One of the dreams, Jesus was bolting out of heaven on his white horse with his holy army. They were bolting out. They were coming back with vengeance to take vengeance upon all the enemies of God. All who rejects him, rejects his forgiveness of sins, his gift of mercy, salvation. All who disobey his gospel. That's what his word says. He's coming back. He is bolting. He's going to be bolting out of heaven on his white horse with his holy army, with angels, with the saints. And they're coming back with wrath and vengeance. And they will destroy all the enemies of God. And he's also shown me in many dreams. I saw the saints. I saw my body. I saw me change into glorious lights. Multiple dreams. I saw me change from lights into lights. My arms every part of me. So this fleshly body of mine is daily <laughs> getting more wrinkled, <laughs> getting more, uh, what is it called? Sunspot, you know, because I'm out of this and all that. But um, one day, and it won't be too long, 
we will all be changed into lights, into immortality as he is. We will see him as he is. I have seen him in so many dreams as he reveal himself, his glory, his word and manifest his word. He will reveal himself to all who believes in his word, believes every word that scriptures has said. He will manifest himself to all who has his word in in them. Amen. He will manifest. That's what Jesus promised. And he surely keeps his promises. Well, I don't want to drag this video too long. I just wanted to say that um, God is faithful. Just like he was faithful in my life all the way back then to now. I don't know what he's got for me the next 40 years. But I know that um, my ladder will be greater than um, my beginning. My beginning was small. My beginning was painful. It was like Moses running around the wilderness for 40 years. You know, running in the wilderness for 40 years. I, I see my life as like that. The first 40 years was 40 years of wilderness. So now I'm going to start walking into the promised land with God, with my Redeemer. Amen. Knowing who I am, knowing who He is, knowing His call, knowing His promises for my life and my son's life. I pray that you would draw close to the Lord, give him praise for what he's done in your life already, and what he's doing, and what he's going to do in the new season in 2022 and beyond. Amen. Hallelujah. Our God is awesome. He is awesome. Thank you, Father. We love you. Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you, Lord, for saving me out of the hands of my enemies. Thank you, Lord, for protecting, providing, blessing. Father, I ask that you would pour out your mercy your goodness your grace and double portions upon my brothers and my sisters that are listening right now lord god pour out your goodness lord god your mercy lord god your power your glory lord god your majesty your wisdom revelation lord your spirit god and the fear of the lord be upon each and every one of us god for the fear of the lord is the beginning of wisdom lord we bless you we praise you jesus thank you thank you thank you for living dying for us god thank you holy spirit for teaching us who you are, teaching us who we are in you, empowering us, God, transforming us, God, comforting us, God. You are the Prince of Peace. You are our bestest friend who sticks closer than a brother. You are the lover of our heart and soul. You are our best friend. Help us, Lord, to love you even greater, better, deeper in 2022. You are worthy, oh God. You are worthy. We bless you, Lord. Bless my brothers and my sisters, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Merry Christmas.